did a little bit of work with Dwayne on uh, getting ready for the meeting, the first meeting to review the RFQ in, in depth uh, is tonight with one of the CMs uh, out of India. So we um, we just kind of reviewed stuff and made sure we had all our questions together and everything. Um, so I'll be doing that in a couple of hours. So yeah, that's about all I've been up to. So I didn't really do much on the you know, voice side of things or GUI or anything like that today. All right, well, I'm just, I'm working on the conversion of the wiki skill to become a common query skill. I spent the last couple of days understanding intent parsing and how things are passed off and what fallback queries are and all of that good stuff. And I found a bug in the question and answer skill, which is, I guess, basically the common fallback skill for queries, but it ends up, I guess, being, you know, a common query thing. And it sends out messages for uh, fallback when it gets its turn. But I, I refactored the loop because right now it breaks on the first match found. And I just said, go ahead and, you know, run through them all so I can see what intents, what intent matches they return and confidence levels. And I noticed that it's always timing out after the third or fourth. So it's kind of weird how it works. It, it actually works like you would expect because, not because it's coded right. So what it's doing is it's actually timing out after the third or fourth, which is it never finds anything in fallback anyway once it gets to unknown fallback. Um, and because it always returns null intent matches, why it bothers, I don't know. Uh, but it always says, I couldn't find that or I didn't, you know, whatever it is. I don't know about that, whatever, which is interesting because now that they're going through all of them and it's timing out on every one, you'll hear the answer before or after. It'll say, I couldn't find that. And then it'll repeat the answer or play the answer. So I looked at it. It's, it's a very tight time. It's like one millisecond, which is ridiculous for these things to get back and sending stuff on the message bus and whatnot. So anyway, um, I, I can put it back. I'm just, I always instrument mine up to document and log so I can see what's going on and then I sort my logs so I can see in time. And uh, yeah, so I'm working on that. I mean, really at the end of the day, the work product tomorrow will be, I'll have the wiki skill converted to common play framework and that'll be that. And then I'll move on to something else. But I wanted to understand why I was seeing so many intent clashes. I mean, I knew it because it wasn't, <clears throat> basically disabling any intents ever. And they were all open to everything, but I can see, uh, now that I understand the code, I can see exactly what's going on where. And yeah, Converse is a uh, interesting concept. I'll leave it at that. Should be deprecated, but I'll leave it at that. And I'll move on. So whoever goes next. Well, actually I'll go next because speaking, I kind of follow on from what you're saying. So I've been down a small rabbit hole um, for the last day. Um, because of intents and you know why certain timer tents aren't hitting and stuff. So what I've done, and I already I started this back with the weather skill, but didn't do a great job of it. And now that I see I need it again, <laughs> I'm doing it, I'm doing a better job of it. I um I created a debug logging branch of adapt. Um and I'm putting a metric fuck ton of log of logs in this branch. Um because Adapt is kind of complex and the wordings of the variables are kind of complex. So unless you really know what's going on, it's hard to follow. So um, so yeah, I've been doing that um, just so I can see uh, what is happening in the intent parser when I have a question about whether or not an intent's working the way it's supposed to. Um, or, or if there's an intent clash, um, I can see the differences between the intents and see why the clash is happening. Um, and I may do something similar with Codacious, and I may do something similar with Core, even with the intent service, because more happens after. I wouldn't waste my time with, with it. I wouldn't waste my time with Codacious. It matches rarely, if ever, anything. And on top of that, yeah. it's not. I haven't gotten into it, and it's not clear to me that it's not getting some sort of feedback because it is a neural network. And so it wouldn't surprise me that. Well, it could be, but the thing is, the right, Pedacious is actually our top 
a high predacious intent match is will will turn a higher in the hierarchy of intents a predacious intent match high is above an adapt match yeah, so like, like right now i'm having a problem with taking time yeah the next time you see a predacious high intent match let me know uh but the thing is i noticed also the fallback skills there's only two of them right now which is duck duck go and wolf ram but they are prioritized based upon reverse append order to the array. So, you know, they basically all go in from the common play framework as a, I think it's either a five or a 50 priority. But then it says, well, if there's any others in here of the same priority, bump the priority by one. Are there any of those? We'll bump it by one. Any of those? No. Okay, now go ahead and instantiate it. So uh, they actually end up going in in the reverse append order. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is what Josh said was absolutely true, and he's been saying it for years, evidently, which is you can only get so far with flat regex and tent matching. And I tried to uh, address that a little bit with the original PR, where we would basically have that hierarchical state kind of uh, enabled uh, versus disabled so that you could reduce them. But you're going to see all sorts of intent matches, and... The wrong way to go about it is to start. I know what everybody tries to do, so it's it's going to be interesting. I've seen it, and, and it's going to be, you know, for this, let's increase the uh, confidence level. But that's just a finger in the dike kind of thing. So there's going to be a lot of that. Um, you know, the other thing is you, we've never ran with barge in on, and that opens up a whole completely different set of behaviors from this system. So now that I know it better from the foundation and the guts. It doesn't surprise me that it was working just quite well the way it was because it could it was really single threaded. It could do one thing at a time. Um, you know, you had kind of maybe, you know, alarms and timers can interrupt, but really pretty much all these skills, once they got hold, they just didn't allow you to interrupt them. They didn't have to deal with being interrupted or anything like that. It was very simplistic and single level. Um, yeah, so we probably might want to go back to turning barge in off. But anyway, yeah. Um, you're going to find a lot of that. I wouldn't waste a lot of time in those intent parsers. I would, uh, what I did is I just focused on what they're reporting back regarding confidence levels on their intent matches to see what's going on. And you can just, that's in the intentservice.py in the skills subdirectory where you can log that. Uh, and yeah, well, I want to figure out how these things work really well. And yeah, well, that I need to figure out what they're doing on the inside. And part of the problem is that, you know, some of the data structures that are passed around adapt are dictionaries of lists of lists of dictionaries of lists of dictionaries. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, what is what and what's doing what and why is uh, takes a lot more time than I want yeah, to spend. Yeah, I don't even know why we have a fallback unknown skill and a fallback skill base class at all. There were two of them. One of them was deprecated. We have a newer one now. But... They both really, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know what purpose they serve. Um, but anyway, and we hit it like three times. We hit an unknown like fallback high priority, medium, and low, and they never return anything, it seems, except nuns or structures of nuns. So I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm Public service announcements for all you developers out there. If you're going to nest dictionaries, don't go more than one or two deep or, I'll, or I might come find you and kill you. Yeah, well, that's a good point, too. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting. It depends upon how complex our UI is going to get in our use cases. But the good news is from Derek that I think it's going to be pretty simplistic. If we play down to our level of competition. We should be fine. Uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't spend too much time in Pedacious and Adapt. They're pretty straightforward. They're just Adapt is just regex matching, basically. And word, some of it's word count, which is kind of crazy, like, Three of the four words match, so I, I have a higher confidence level and stuff like that. It's, but I don't know. I'd spend a lot of time in there. Um, that's not going to be where you're going to find your problems. Your problems are going to be at a higher level where things are not getting or getting clashed, right? Or it could even be that converse is hanging around, and I haven't looked at the converse methods and those skills that that are seemingly always in there. But you know, the last guy that was. Uh, pushed into the uh, active skills array is going to have first whack at everything. So, anyway. All right. So, yeah, that's pretty much been me is figuring out intent parsing. I should finish that up today. And then once I have all this written, I should use it whenever I want to use it to figure out what's going on. 
Um, and another plug that if there are things about intent passing that are not included in the documentation, which is probably true, that we should, you know, add them. So any... Yeah, I can compare notes and stuff. I mean, I, I still have that that Confluence document um, out there for intent parsing that may or may not have good stuff in it for the documentation. I don't know if you've had a look at it or not. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that we can improve. You talking about the one that there. you did? Yeah, yeah the, the adapt it, yeah. Yeah. I even commented yeah. on it, I think, yeah. Oh, I mean, I was talking to Gaz as far as yeah. including any parts of it in the documentation. Yeah, I'll have to go have a look. Um, cool. By the way, I won't actually kill anybody. I was a very, I was a... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just, just want to throw that out there. The figure of speed. <laughs> um, and in terms of the unknown fallback, you know that that provides the the last layer of you know what Mycroft should do when it doesn't understand something. So, um, you know, the, but it always returns a null, empty structure. I haven't I haven't looked at it, um, but um, you know, obviously we're we're not doing anything at the moment, but there's the, the whole persona project, which, you know, theoretically, um, uh, would, would take in those things that don't get answered and then, um, learn from that and, and slowly get Well, I mean, that. that's, that's what you have with Pedacious, I believe. Pedacious is designed to have a, a feedback loop so that it can learn. It's a neural network and, uh, it seems like it gets trained via the message bus at boot and never again. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so there's, there's currently no mechanism for it to actually like add in new new data and, and learn over time. Um, but yeah, that there is there is a project that exists that was doing that. Um, it's just not the priority at the moment. Yeah, FYI, I also got an email from somebody, not an email, a PR email where um, someone thinks we need to rename all of our um, <laughs> repos. So um, take that for what it's worth. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, I, if you're not going to respond, I'll, I'll go in there and respond. <laughs> yeah. Just don't kill anyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so for well, me... I, I empathize with them. <laughs> I'm not a murderer, I promise. I have one that has the repository is one name, the skill name is another name, or the directory is another name, but the class it instantiates is something different, and I think that's the question answered. Well, I think we have yeah, any problems with skills, period. Yeah. What, are the, address, what are the three <laughs> problems in computer science? Like <laughs> Naming things, naming things, and naming things. No, I think it's naming things and off-by-one errors. Um <laughs> Um, anyway, so today for me was uh, um, we released Adapt zero point four point two, which included some some bug fixes primarily um, and lots of documentation updates, you know, for the doc strings and things inside of it. Um, I uh, we've had a an issue get raised around licensing of a of a third party package um, that I sent the email out. Um, uh, uh, Derek, I didn't include you in that email, but it's boring stuff that you don't need to worry about, so don't. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm, I'm writing a response to the PR at the moment um, so that the community are aware about what's going on there. Um, uh, and what else did I do? Um, I started going back to the, now that we've merged, um, microphone. Uh, now that we've released Microsoft Core 2102, um, I, um, I started going through the, the old uh, PRs again that we um, might want to merge and uh, fixed up um, fixed up a very old one that was based, like so close to, to merging the, the community member just you know dropped off the radar. Um, but essentially it just checks for, uh, for ABX um, instruction set in the CPU info when installing um, uh, because that's needed for precise. Um, and so hopefully with this merged, it will just reduce the number of people that come to us saying their thing's broken when really their machine is just 10 years too old. Um, 
Yeah, and I've also been in touch with, well, reached out to Mattermost so we can uh, sort out some a new licensing situation there um, as we're hitting the, um, the limit on Mattermost. Uh, and that's about it for today, I think. Uh, my plan at the moment is to keep pushing through, like do some PR merging in, in core um, uh, because there's a whole bunch of stuff that's sitting there waiting for us that's been waiting for the new major release. So, I guess on the Mattermost thing, um, I, brought, I brought that up a week or so ago, um, and there are several hundred people who haven't logged in since 2017 and several thousand who haven't logged in since 2018. Um, so before we go paying a bunch of money for more licenses, um, I think I haven't been able to do it yet, but I got to go ahead and Michael. You know, yeah, I think Michael in. said just whack everybody that hasn't been in yeah. since 2017, right? Right off the bat. Yeah. Um, or not yeah. whack, but by whack, of course, we mean disable. So if they ever right, really right, need right, to come right. back, that their their idea is still there, but we're only paid for active right, accounts. Right, right, right. No killing. Please. I watch, no killing. I watch, I watch, I watch, I watch Al Capone and the Untouchables. And everything.